In this lesson, we want to discuss how to determine whether three points are collinear. All right, so in our last lesson, we used our distance formula to determine if three points were the vertices, or you could say the corners of a right triangle. Now we're going to look at another application of our distance formula. And basically, we're going to use our distance formula to determine if three points are collinear, which just means they lie on the same line. Now, for most of you that, again, took lower level algebra courses, you know that there are many different methods we can use for this task. This is probably one of the more tedious methods. Generally, at this kind of level, where we're talking about the coordinate plane, you would use slopes for this process, right? It would be a little bit faster. But again, for the sake of completeness, we'll use this method. And then as we move throughout the course, we'll look at collinearity with slopes and then a few other methods that are much more efficient. So we're going to start off this first example where we have point A, which is 0, negative 4, point B, which is 3, negative 2, and point C, which is 6, 0. So we want to know if these three points are collinear, meaning they lie on the same line. So I'll just tell you for the first example, they will be collinear. But we're going to look at a graph in a minute. We'll see that I've kind of already sketched a line that goes through the three points. But the idea here is that to find the distance between each pair of points, we use our distance formula. So with three points, you're going to have three distances. Let me kind of paste this in here. So you're going to have the first distance, which is the distance between point A and point B. The second distance, which is the distance between point A and point C. And the third distance, which is the distance between point B and point C. Okay, so the idea here is that the sum of the two smaller distances is going to be equal to the largest distance if these three points are collinear. Okay, so visually, we can see that that would be true. Okay, so I've already sketched the line that goes through these three points. Again, for reference sake, 0, negative 4, this is going to be point A. So this is point A. 3, negative 2, this is going to be point B. And then 6, 0, this is going to be point C. Okay, all we're saying is that the largest distance here, which we can see is from A to C. Okay, that's the largest distance. That should be made up of these two smaller distances summed together. Okay, in this case, that's going to be from A to B and then from B to C. So if I sum those two amounts together, I should get the largest one, which is from A to C, if these three points are collinear or lie on the same line. So let's go back and plug into our formula, and we'll prove that this is the case. Okay, so I'm just going to label point A as x sub 1, y sub 1. Let me do this in a different color so we don't get confused. So this is going to be x sub 1, y sub 1. I'm going to label point B as x sub 2, y sub 2. Okay, let me erase this. And we're just going to plug into the formula and we'll get our first distance. So the distance between A and B for x sub 2, I'm going to plug in what? I'm going to plug in a 3. For x sub 1, I'm going to plug in a 0. So 3 minus 0 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So let's put a 9 there. Then plus for y sub 2, I'm going to have negative 2. And then for y sub 1, I'm going to have a negative 4. So minus a negative 4 is plus 4. So this is plus 4. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So you have 9 plus 4, which is 13. So this is going to be the square root of 13. Okay, so that's the distance between point A and point B. So let me go back to this right here. Let me kind of erase this. And again, this is A, this is B, and this is C. So from point A to point B, so basically from here to here, this guy right here, we've said that's square root of 13. Well, now we're looking at the distance between A and C. So let me erase this, and I'll kind of put it over here. So this is my x sub 2, y sub 2 now. So for x sub 2, I'm going to plug in what? I'm going to plug in a 6. For x sub 1, I'm going to plug in a 0. And then for y sub 2, I'm going to plug in what? I'm going to plug in a 0. And for y sub 1, I'm going to plug in a negative 4. Minus a negative 4 is plus 4. So 6 minus 0 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So this is 36. And then 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So if you have 36 plus 16, that's going to give you 52. Now, the square root of 52 can be simplified, right? 52 is 4 times 13. So this is 4 times 13 underneath my square root symbol. Square root of 4 is 2. So I can say this is 2 times the square root of 13. Now, let me go back. We know that from A to C, so this guy right here from A to C, 
this is 2 times square root of 13, okay? From A to B is square root of 13, and from A to C is 2 times square root of 13. So, these points will be collinear if this guy right here from B to C is square root of 13. Let's go ahead and prove that's the case. So this guy right here, for the distance between B and C, let me kind of erase this, and let me write it in here. We'll say this is X sub 1, Y sub 1. So X sub 2 now, if I'm plugging in, is going to be 6. X sub 1 is going to be 3. And we'll do this in a second. Y sub 2 is going to be 0. And Y sub 1 is going to be negative 2. Minus the negative 2 is plus 2. So 6 minus 3 over here is 3. 3 squared is 9. So this is 9. And then 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So again, 9 plus 4 is 13. So we do get square root of 13 here. Okay. So you can see that the sum of the two smaller distances from A to B and from B to C, square root of 13 plus square root of 13, does give me the largest kind of distance, right? So 2 times square root of 13, which is the distance between A and C, right? So you can show this, square root of 13 plus square root of 13 is equal to 2 times square root of 13, right? This over here on the left would become 2 times square root of 13, so this is a true statement. So we can say these three points are collinear or rely on the same line, right? So if we go back, again, we're looking at the distance between B and C, so from here to here, and we found that this was square root of 13 as well. So again, just to kind of wrap this up, we have the distance from A to B. So let me just kind of write this out. So the distance from A to B, so between those two points, is again, the square root of 13. Then we also have the distance from B to C. So let me write that out. So the distance from B to C, that's also the square root of 13. And again, what we're saying here is that because these three points are collinear, when I sum these two smaller distances together, what I get is the largest distance, okay, which is from A right here to C right here, which again is two times square root of 13. So the distance between, again, A and C is gonna be two times the square root of 13. So this is always going to be true when we have three points that lie on the same line, or you could say when they are collinear. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Very easy concept, just something that's very, very tedious. So we have our first point A, which is negative two comma zero. We have our second point B, which is two comma seven. And our third point C, which is negative one comma four. So let me kind of paste this in. And to start, I'm just gonna label this one as x sub one, y sub one and this one x sub 2, y sub 2. And let's just plug into the formula. So this guy right here, x sub 2 is going to be 2, and x sub 1 is going to be negative 2. Minus the negative 2 is plus 2. And then for y sub 2, I'm going to have 7. For y sub 1, I'm going to have 0. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16. 7 minus 0 is 7, 7 squared is 49. So what is 16 plus 49? That's going to be 65. So we'd have square root of 65. All right, then for the distance between A and C, let me erase this, and I'll put this one over here. Let me kind of make this a little bit better. So I'll say that this guy over here is going to be X sub 2, Y sub 2 now. So for X sub 2, we're going to plug in a negative 1. For X sub 1, we're going to plug in a negative 2. Minus a negative 2 is plus 2. And then for y sub 2, we're going to plug in a 4. For y sub 1, we're going to plug in a 0, okay? So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So that's 1 squared, which would be just 1. 4 minus 0 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Okay, so 1 plus 16 is going to give me 17. So this is the square root of 17. So square root of 17. So for my third distance, the distance between b and c, let me kind of slide this down real quick. So B will now be X sub one, Y sub one. So let me erase this. X sub two will be negative one. Then X sub one will be two. Negative one minus two will be negative three. Negative three squared is nine. So let's just put that there. Y sub two is four. And then Y sub one is going to be seven, okay? So four minus seven is gonna be negative three. Negative three squared is nine, okay? So you have nine plus nine, which is 18. Now. I can simplify that. 18 is what? It's nine times two, and nine is a perfect square. Nine is three times three. So basically square root of nine is three. So I can write this as three times square root of two. So three times square root of two. 
So which one of these guys is the largest? Well, square root of 65 is gonna be the largest. Again, this is an irrational number, but if you approximate it, it's about 8.06. For square root of 17, if you approximate that, it's about 4.12. And then for three times square root of two, if you approximate that, it's about 4.24. So this guy right here should be the largest distance, right, from A to B. So basically we would see that the square root of 17 plus three times the square root of two would be equal to the square root of 65, and that's gonna be false, right? This is not gonna work itself out. If you wanna use an approximation for each, we could say that again, the square root of 65 is about, okay, about 8.06, okay? And then the square root of 17 is about 4.12, and then three times the square root of two is about 4.24. Okay, just generally speaking, approximately speaking, are these equal? Well, 4.12 plus 4.24 is 8.36, right? So these aren't gonna be equal, okay? So we can just erase this, we don't need this, okay? Even though we used approximations, we can clearly see that these aren't gonna be equal. This is false. So these three points are not going to be collinear. All right, let's just take a look at one more of these. So we have point A, which is negative four comma three, point B, which is two comma five, and point C, which is negative one comma four. Again, are they collinear? So let's paste in our distance formulas. And I'm just gonna start out with the first distance between A and B. Again, I'm gonna label this guy as X sub one, Y sub one. I'll label this as X sub two, Y sub two. So X sub two is two. Let me kind of write that in. And then X sub one is negative four, minus the negative four is plus four. Y sub two is five. And then Y sub one is three. Okay, so this is three. All right, so two plus four is six, six squared is 36. So this is 36. And then five minus three is two, two squared is four. So 36 plus four is gonna give me 40. So this is the square root of 40. Now, so we can simplify this because 40 is four times 10. We know the square root of four is two. So I can write the answer here as two times square root of 10. All right, let's kind of slide this down here and look at the distance between A and C. And let me kind of move this over so it's not in the way. So two times square root of 10. Okay, so for X sub two, we have negative one. For X sub one, we have negative four. So minus a negative four is plus four. For Y sub two is four. Then for Y sub one, it's three, okay? So we have negative one plus four, which is three. Three squared is nine. Then we have four minus three, which is one. One squared is one. So you have nine plus one, which is 10. So this is square root of 10. So this is square root of 10. Okay, so now let's look at B and C. So let's move this down. So for X sub two, I'm gonna plug in a negative one. For X sub one, I'm gonna plug in a two. For Y sub two, I'm gonna plug in a four. And then for Y sub one, I'm gonna plug in a five, okay? So negative one minus two is negative three. Negative three squared is nine. Okay, so this is nine. Four minus five is negative one. Negative one squared is one. So this is nine plus one or 10. So this is gonna be the square root of 10. So let me make that a little cleaner and just say this is the square root of 10. So you can already see this is gonna work out, right? Because two times square root of 10 is the largest distance here. And the two smaller distances are gonna to sum to that, right? So you can kind of say that the square root of 10, which is the distance between A and C, plus the square root of 10, which is the distance between B and C, is gonna be equal to kind of the largest distance, which is the distance between A and B, which is, if I can fit this on the screen here, let me kind of move this down. Again, which is two times square root of 10. Okay, so this does work itself out. You end up saying that the left side here is two times square root of 10, and the right side here is two times square root of 10. So this is gonna be true, right? These three points, A, B, and C, A being negative four comma three, B being two comma five, and C being negative one comma four are collinear or they lie on the same line.